Brothers and sisters, welcome to the God Minute. This is Father Michael on this random Wednesday with Shelby, who will be sharing with us one of the spiritual works of mercy today, counseling the doubtful. Thank you for joining us in chapel today. Let's begin our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 54, Confidence in Prayer O God, by your name save me. By your strength defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Listen to the words of my mouth. Strangers have risen against me. The ruthless seek my life. They do not keep God before them. God is present as my helper. The Lord sustains my life. I will offer you generous sacrifice and give thanks to your name, Lord, for it is good. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Spiritual Works of Mercy Counseling the Doubtful I am a fixer. I imagine some of you can relate. If someone comes to me with a problem, I have like a compulsive need to try and give them advice. Problems need and have solutions, and I can help with those. I'm good at advice. Why would someone vent to me if they aren't trying to fix that problem? I'm working on it. I've been working on this actually with my therapist for a while now. And in therapy, I've learned a lot about how to do this differently. And not from any profound statement that my therapist has made, but simply from the act of talking through my struggles. There is something really profound in the act of being seen by another, being heard truly, and of having space made for you to be you. To truly do this, to really be seen and heard, you have to have the opportunity to be honest, to be vulnerable. And to be honest, we are not all sunshine and rainbows. We are sadness and anger. We are pain and struggle. We are doubt. Without making space for those areas, which can be dark or gray or painful, we cannot be fully present, and others cannot be present to us. It is a terrifying and beautiful vulnerability that is required from both parties to truly hear and see. I've struggled with this specific work of mercy in the past. I and many that I love have struggled when we have had doubts or concerns or fears or hurt and in confessing them were met with fixers who just wanted to counsel us to a solution. I can still hear and feel them, just as I did in those moments. Well, have you read this book? Have you gone to confession lately? When was the last time you went to adoration? But are you still going to Mass? Oh, this is just a dark night. Saints had them, you'll get over it. You just don't understand it enough. You have to pray harder. You shouldn't hang out with those people. It hurts me to think about those moments. They were so full of shame. They felt like personal indictments. Like I hadn't tried hard enough. Like I had made the wrong choices. Like my perfectly human doubt was my fault. And it hurts even more to know that I have been on the other side of that. I have explained away someone's doubt, 
given them trite counsel, pushed away their discomfort in favor of an easy solution. Well, easy for me, at least. I know from being on both sides of this that often the work of counseling the doubtful becomes a denying of their feelings, their experience, the humanity of another person out of a fear of being in the gray spaces with them. We treat these moments like infectious diseases to be quarantined and killed with medicines instead of encounters with their hearts and with the spirit as she resides within them. Counseling someone who doubts requires trust. It requires both parties to be vulnerable and present. It requires you to truly hear another person, for you to love them enough to listen and enough to persist in that love, even if their doubt persists too. You have to confront your own doubts and be open to the experience of another. And more than anything, it requires you to lean on the mystery of God's grace, which does not conform to human fears, or to plans for fixing. How weak is the God you imagine if a single moment of human doubt is too great to overcome? How small is your imagined God if they cannot be found in the midst of uncertainty? And how cruel is your God if a natural moment of doubt makes someone unlovable and broken? Doubt is a sign that our hearts and minds are functioning. And sometimes doubt is where those we counsel stay. Love them anyway. Hear them anyway. Be present to them anyway. God is good and great enough to be there too. Counseling the doubtful is not a work of transactions, and it is not a work of repair. It's a work of mercy. Approach it with a loving and merciful heart, my friends, and find ease and rest in the gray spaces. God is present there, too. Let us lift our voice to the Father and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you. And we thank you. For when we turn to you, you love us right where we're at and give us the comfort, the direction that we need to move ahead. Be with us always so that we may do the same for our brothers and sisters and so love one another to life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Thanks for joining us in prayer today. For all of us, let us go out proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ with our lives. Take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow.